yes, um, I thank you very much for the invitation and this really great uh, conference. I really enjoy being here. And I'm not so sure if I can <laughs> really add new thoughts on this uh, after this um, spe uh, speech, but uh, maybe I can add some uh, new uh, um, perspective because uh, um, I would like to concentrate on a specific and a more a linguistic form of uh, online communication, which some of you may know uh, as the online form of hate speech. Um, especially in regard to this kind of hate speech, the constitution of an online self is interesting um, because we have to consider the different roles of a speaking um, and a writing um, subject. Um, so there are multiple self-constitutions in this communicative uh, situation. Um, as the communication is happening in a political framework, mostly it is necessary to think about the political character um, of these uh, actors, uh, acting persons too. Um, yes. <laughs> um, um, no, I think it's okay. <laughs> there are not so many slides. Um, as the communication is happening in a political framework, um, mostly it is necessary, um, as you can see, uh, to uh, focus on the political character of the online self. Um, of course, I'm aware um, of the scholarly approach of politicizing all human actions and thoughts, um, even the ones uh, with a clear non-political uh, um, appearance, but I like to adapt um, a more specific um, perspective on the political. Um, so in my opinion, a straight aesthetic approach is not uh, constructive, but if we connect post-structural uh, theories of, uh, the, of, of identity with concrete forms of balance of power, uh, we are able to discuss the phenomenon of hate speech uh, within me a media and a social context. I'm aware of the fact that we are all acting in a highly politicized uh, framework all the time, but according to Shantai Mouf, um, I would like to call this a space of uh, hegemony. She's talking about the difference of the political and politics, and in regard to hate speech in uh, social media platforms, I think this, is a, uh, this difference is really crucial. I wouldn't deny that hate posts uh, are embedded in a political context, and of course they are ref they f refer to political um, subjects, but referring to Hannah Arendt, I will argue that hate posts are a form of violence, and therefore they never could be polit political. And do doing so, I'll interconnect Hannah Arendt and Hannah Arendt's understanding of the political, and maybe in the first instance, it seems to be a little weird because of the contradictory notions of uh, Move and Arendt, um, but I demonstrate that there is a correlation. Um, hopefully, I can demonstrate this. <laughs> According to MOVE, the political always entails a construction of antagonism. Correspondingly, the political must be understood as a space of power, conflict, and antagonism. Um, but as she emphasizes, we can notice a post-political vision uh, of globalization and universalization of liberal democracy. The view of international relations has to be considered as an attempt to overcome antagonistic aspects of the political and in Mouffe's opinion, the aim of uh, this perspective is to establish a world beyond left and right, beyond hegemony, and finally beyond antagonism. Uh, through uh, the constitution of a rational, that is a fully, con um, fully inclusive consensus. But the central task of democr democratic politics is to accept the pluralism of political identities in order to, as she declares, uh, quote, envisage the creation of a vibrant agonistic public sphere of contestation where different hegemonic political projects can be confronted, end of quote. Um, otherwise, the concept of political consistency, which includes the negation of antagonism, will strengthen the antagonistic potential both in politics and in society even more radically. The politics of consensus deny a separation of different positions. As a result, they achieve the opposite. The assertion of consensus causes an intensification of this separation. To accept and allow pluralism means to create an adversarial model that, that makes the, the adversary not look like an enemy that has to be destroyed, but to be confronted with. So it is uh, not the central task of democratic politics to overcome a political enmity, but to lower the we-they distinction um, of antagonism by means of establishing symbolic and representative <coughs> political procedures. Move caused this few agonism. An agonistic space uh, could perform um, a democratic task of turning conflicting parties or groups into real uh, participants of a discussion. 
In order to do so, differentiated alternatives have to be accepted. Um, at this point, I see uh, the correlation between um, uh, moves in Aaron's perspectives on the political. Aaron's view of the political depends on the understanding of <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 Um, depends on the understanding of a space of public deliberation. A political human being is uh, a speaking and acting person, which means to be a person embedded in a social environment. According to Arendt, an uh, isolated person never can be understood as a political person or a political character. Since antagonism doesn't only represent the opposite of universal consensus, but also reveals the limits of rationalism and individualism, we have to face society in a political way, so we can set up a correlation between the political and the nature of collective identities. Both involve the constitution of we and they. <laughs> Move underlines the pluralistic nature of the social world that includes conflicts. From a post-structuralist perspective, she stresses the relational nature of political and collective identities and claims possible. Uh, and claims uh, to delineate uh, different understandings of the friend em enemy or we they distinction, which tolerate a democratic pluralism instead of denying it. According to Muth's notion, the constitution of social and political identities is based on the concept of uh, difference. Similarly, Henry Staten uses the term constitutive outside, um, which refers to a concept of, uh, of identity that always depends on the establishment um, uh, of a difference. Therefore, the perception of an outside uh, position is necessary to constitute identity. This means that the existence of any identity is relational and based on the affirmation of a different position. At the same time, a given identity is tied to the idea of hierarchy um, by establishing a system of power, which always includes social marginali marginalization. The constitution of the identity of we is regulated um, of by the creation of a they, um, which implicates, on the one hand, a demarcation of, the of these uh, positions. But on the other hand, by uh, means of this demarcation, both we and they refer to each other. This interdependency could result in a possibility of social exclusion. <laughs> Move emphasizes that, of course, not every social relationship has to, turn to, has to be turned um, necessarily into such an antagonistic order of bad blood, um, but we need to consider and acknowledge the possibility of antagonism. Thus, the common ground of uh, Move and Arendt lies in the turnaround of this antagonism, which is the agonistic fear, sphere. Um, similar to Arendt's uh, perspective on the political as a space of communication and social action, uh, the agonistic uh, approach allows to emancipate and um, equal uh, exchange in a political way. So it doesn't deny conflict, but even cause for it, as Move describes this process. This conflict is, differ uh, is different from the antagonistic fight because it includes an exact pluralistic stances of poli uh, po uh, on politics. Uh, this is why I see a correlation to Arendt's uh, point of view um, of the political as, a, as you can see, a social, communi communicative, and particularly public uh, exchange. Hate speech, however, determines the most, uh, at most the ag antagonistic conflict instead of a, a political exchange because it doesn't accept different poli um, politics, uh, political opinions. And although these posts can be described, of course, as linguistic statements, they are different to Arendt's notion of public communication. This is the reason why I don't understand hate posts as a political form of communication, but in the words of uh, Judith Butler, as a linguistic, linguistic vulnerability. In its uh, demand to exclude the opponent, hate speech is rarely connected to democratic politics. Although they pretend to be counter hegemonic statements or practices, these comments circulate not in a political, but in a hegemonic framework. The ambition to accomplish a rearrangement of political power doesn't offer precise courses of action. Therefore, we cannot describe the antagonistic we-they distinction of hate posts as an <coughs> active political participation. Um, though antagonism is always part of the political discourse, a real political exchange is not possible in the context of hate speech. Furthermore, at first sight, it seems impossible to react to uh, uh, the antagonism of hate speech. 
Um, according uh, to Aurel Kolnai, um, hate is defined as a spontaneous and highly effective action that makes a planned response difficult. Especially in regard to digital media, this is an interesting point. techno euphoric uh, positions understand the sheer availability of a so-called open communication as a free and equal exchange, mostly in uh, contrast to conventional media types. The, technolo uh, the technological uh, possibilities of cross-border mobile communication in real time seems to evoke a culture of respectful communication. The term comment suggests, in a misleading way, um, an interaction of a dialogue between the ideological positions of the original text and the response. But we have to keep in mind that the comment function uh, in social media isn't laid out for uh, dialogue. That's, the most, uh, that's why most comments don't refer to the source text, but are separated hierarchically. Accordingly, hate speech is only effective and not political in two ways. Firstly, as a very effective emotion, hate never represents a well-considered um, expression. And secondly, comments on social media platforms don't evoke uh, interaction because of the media structures in which they are embedded. Because of this, we can assume that hate comments are spontaneous and non-referential. Correspondingly, we have to focus our thoughts on how we can respond to hate speech. Um, if such comments are written as an end in itself, we have to ask for, for potential resistance. Or more generally, how can we react to a linguistic harassment? The assumption that language can injure us is to, uh, related to hate speech. The power to injure lets language act against us, as uh, Butler claims. The agency of language to injure positions ourselves as the uh, objects um, of this injury. So the injuring character of language conditions the constitution of the individual position. Louis Althusser argues that the addressing of a person constitutes its identification in the first place. <coughs> so it's important to acknowledge the crucial role of the person who addresses somebody else. If this addressing is inciting, we can describe the constitution of the self as degrading. With the definition uh, of hate in mind, Kornai argues that it's possible to feel hate against people we don't know uh, in person. Then uh, this notion is tied to Butler's idea of the unexpected character of hate speech because obviously there is no need for a previous communication um, a communicative exchange. So the initiator of hate posts could be a simple association or adverse to prejudice instead of a personal concern, which, by the way, would uh, neither <coughs> legitimate or nor explain uh, hate posts. And this makes it so unpredictable and unanticipated. The spontaneous character of hate speech implies uh, a loss of control over ourselves we experience disorientation and lose control over the situation in which we find ourselves. That means the act of addressing it determines the constitution of the self. In the case of hate speech, uh, this constitution, uh, constitution is injuring and paralyzing. But Butler stresses that um, at the same time, there is the possibility to return this unexpectedness of hate speech by using language as an unexpected and empowered response. But which constitution of an online self is connected to hate speech and their resistance? Previously, actors on social media platforms were understood and ce uh, celebrated as possessing a hybrid agency um, which fuses the roles of producer and consumer. Today, we notice a shift and a decrease in the importance of these actors because they are reduced to links, likes, and shares, uh, and they hence matter uh, as consumers merely. But the marginalized status of the actors doesn't mean that they merge into a non unionist mess. But, they marginal this, uh, but this uh, marginalization divides them. So we can notice a new form of subjectivity with uh, which Michaela Ott describes as a individual uh, occurrence, which we heard uh, from. Uh, the individual character of online communication um, means a non-concluded, uh, agglomerated form of political participation, which replaces uh, the, notions, uh, the notion of collective um, digital behavior. According to us, the opposition of the intention of participation on the one side and the absorption by um, outside influences on the other side is crucial for digital communication. Devices like smartphones or tablets, etc., uh, pretend to create a worldwide connected community. But this pretended collective depends no longer on temporal or special uh, conditions. Rather, we can notice various loosely and short-time connections which are without any commitments and direct at the same time the link. 
So we can understand this procedure of continuous coincidence and separation uh, as a rejection of classic terms like um, community and the necessity of an active self like Gerhard Raunig um, argues. The alleged social and individual use of social media networks is rather an increase in information for, uh, for economic usability uh, than the creation of a social space for individual empowerment or um, self-realization. But at the same time, the concept of devaluation <laughs> contains the possibility to consider the authors of uh, hate comments not longer as a consistent group of actors, um, which makes them uh, seem less uh, uh, threatening. However, the addressed person also loses its uh, distinct character as a victim. Thinking of the individual online self makes it possible to create new forms of solidarity and resistance against hate speech and helps to decode and uh, con deconstruct the very injury of these comments by criticizing and dissolving the boundaries of the self. And I know uh, that this slide wasn't really uh, necessary, but I thought, um, it would be nice to uh, uh, close this panel or open the discussion <coughs> with this words and background. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs>